In general, I'm okay with considering myself a progressive. Now, a lot of people, including myself, like to use the word progressive instead of liberal. And we can get into a long discussion about whether those two words are interchangeable or different. Some people say that a progressive is a certain type of liberal. But either way, I'm becoming more and more wary of being associated with those terms for various reasons. One major reason being the ever-expanding link between liberalism and political correctness. Now, I kind of hate the term politically correct because people often use the term in defense of being an asshole. Like, if someone says something and I'm like, don't say that, you're being an asshole and they respond with ah stop being so politically correct no if you know anything about me you know that i am largely in favor of not being an asshole and i think it's okay to suggest to people that they shouldn't be assholes i do that all the time the main problem with political correctness as i think about it is the idea that context doesn't matter and i've seen lots of people literally verbatim argue that context doesn't matter so it's not like i'm making it up the thing about it is context obviously matters i feel like that's a disingenuous thing to say like if i'm talking to my best friend and i'm like like, dude, you're an idiot. That's completely different than if I said the exact same thing to my boss. But then you get people who say things like, no, you shouldn't call anyone an idiot in any context, under any circumstance. But that's, that's like, why? It's an arbitrary thing to ask of people because context obviously matters. Now, of course, not that many people are triggered by the word idiot, but some people are, which kind of speaks to my point about how arbitrary it all is. But there are many words and phrases that some people think are always bad, regardless of the context. And if you notice, I'm refraining from using those particular words in this video because I fear that the mere mention of the word will distract people from the actual point that I'm making, which is part of the problem with political correctness. And you may think that I'm overreacting, but it's actually happen to me a bunch of times. People completely ignore the message that I'm sending or miss the point that I'm making because they were triggered by some particular word or phrase that I use. In my opinion, this is a problem. So there are people who will agree that there is a difference between talking to your best friend and talking to your boss, but there are certain contexts that a lot of PC people will still ignore, particularly the context of performance and art. Now don't get me wrong, you're allowed to criticize media and art. That's perfectly fine. You should do that. It's important that we do that. But criticism is an opinion. It's a discussion. It's not a fact. It's not a command. You shouldn't expect your opinions to be validated and your demands to be met because that's when we get into censorship territory. Now usually when we think about censorship, we think about the media or the government suppressing free expression or suppressing information. And in some cases, censorship may be useful. For example, most countries go to great lengths to prevent and suppress the creation and spread of child pornography. But child pornography is not censored because it is obscene or offensive. It's censored because it is directly exploitative and abusive to people. And I think it's good to make laws that prevent exploitation and abuse. I don't think it's good to make laws that prevent free expression, even if that expression happens to be offensive. There's only two reasons that a government would censor something. A, to prevent people from learning or discussing something, or B, to impose a moral standard upon society. Both of these are problematic for hopefully obvious reasons. Learning things and discussing things is almost never bad. I feel like if you aim to prevent people from discussing something, that makes you look shady. Because if you are so sure that your view is the correct one, you should be prepared to defend it. You shouldn't have to silence your opponents to get your point across. And of course, it's not the job of the government or the media or anybody to dictate what moral compass we all should be following. Now that's one type of censorship, and in free countries, this usually doesn't happen. Free expression is usually protected within reason. And usually when someone tries to shut down free expression, they fail in the eyes of the law. However, we're still seeing censorship in other ways. We have a sort of community censorship that circumvents the law. You see, we're living in what I like to call the era of internet outrage, and with the right amount of outrage, you can effectively bully people into doing whatever you want them to do. And if what you want to do is control what someone can say or make, that's censorship. And this can be really concerning, and there are tons of examples of this. For example, earlier this year, comic book artist Rafael Albuquerque was pressured by the internet outrage machine into pulling a variant cover. Keep in mind, variant cover, meaning you didn't have to buy it, you could just buy the regular version. A variant cover of Batgirl number 41 off of the shelves because people found it offensive. When an out of context joke that people thought was racist was posted to the Twitter account of the Colbert Report, an account by the way that was supposed to represent the in-character thoughts of a fictionalized version of Stephen Colbert, people literally called for the cancellation of the show over this one tweet. And we see this all the time, instead of offering an opposing view or starting a conversation, we just yell and 
scream until someone gets fired. Products get pulled from the shelves, shows get canceled, people become ostracized. This is censorship and it's not okay. Again, if someone expresses something you find distasteful or offensive, you're allowed to be offended and you're allowed to criticize it. But it is not your right or your duty to remove them from society. And it's no one's job to protect you from being offended. And you shouldn't expect to not be offended because we live in a society with a lot of different people with different outlooks and views and we're gonna disagree on stuff all the time. If your aim is to make everyone agree with you on everything, you're gonna have a real bad time. But see, that's the problem. We know we can't make everyone agree with us. So for some people, the next best thing is to silence those who don't. We care about our own opinions way too much. I mean, like I said, it's good to have opinions. Opinions are the launching pads for discussions and discussions are how we enrich our perspective. But so many people seem like they need their opinions validated somehow, like they're not satisfied unless something happens. So we have to assert our opinions as if they're fat. Like in my recent video about Nicole Arbor and her dear fat people video, instead of saying like, it wasn't really funny to me or I really found that offensive, a whole lot of comments said things like, that's not comedy. See, that is an opinion asserted as if it is a fact. We need to feel like our opinions mean something so we pretend that they're facts. We even sometimes cherry pick studies or fudge statistics to prove to ourselves that our opinions are actually facts. Because if you can convince yourself that something is objectively bad for the world, then you can convince yourself that it's okay to try and get rid of it. But that is not how this works. Like I said before, if you're convinced that you're correct, you should be prepared and able to defend your position without attempting to uproot your Opposition. The whole point of protecting the right to free expression is to allow people to say things that might be disagreeable without fear of things like violence or legal repercussion. And this includes expression that is genuinely and clearly asshole in nature. Now it may be true that hateful speech and problematic media influences other people to do shitty things. And to be honest, I think even this is debatable to some extent, but the people who actually do the shitty things are the ones that bear that responsibility. And suggesting otherwise is basically absolving them of that responsibility. And of course, not all speech and expression is or should be protected. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater, you can't directly threaten people, etc. I think what it boils down to is that you just can't end bigotry and hatefulness just by banning it or censoring it. It's an inefficient and arguably counterproductive strategy. The only way we'll ever have a hope of truly ending those things is to maintain a societal discussion about them. And the only way we can effectively do that is by protecting free expression. Expression. That's just me though. Big thank you to everyone who has supported me on Patreon, including these lovely people. I want to give a shout out to all of the new subscribers. How you doing? If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. It looks like this. And subscribe if you like my hair.